Alrighty, well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Eurovision interview here on the channel. I am really, really excited because today we are joined by Switzerland's very own Marius Baer. Hi Marius, how are you doing? Hello everybody. Hey, I'm good, I'm good. I'm in Turin in the hotel. Uh, the weather is all right, but I'm happy that it's not too warm. Uh, yeah, but all fine. Perfect. Well, it's probably better than the weather uh, we're having here in the States because I think yesterday I had a tornado warning and a thunderstorm and oh rain God, and it was, it was a bit of a day. So uh, yeah, I'm sure the turret like weather isn't that me. bad. <laughs> 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 well, um, I wanted to ask you, so you are obviously one of the first artists to have gotten to Turin. So you are amongst the first kind of crew to be there the longest. What has the Eurovision experience been for you so far? We've been here now since uh, three days and I already uh, met a lot of people. We came here with the, with the bus from Switzerland because it's, it's quite near. So Switzerland is about six to seven hours with a car or, or with a bus. Uh, and that was quite cool to go with the bus because uh, then I could take all my stuff with me. So the Swiss delegation came here with like, like huge suitcases and I, I took like three guitars and a mic and a basking amp and my production stuff I took everything with me and uh, yeah and I met already a few artists from uh, other countries and I'm waiting now for UK so Sam Wright is gonna arrive also soon we are in the same hotel and uh, the guy from Poland is gonna stay also in this hotel so uh, yeah something is going on <laughs> yeah 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 well and and specifically uh thinking about kind of eurovision uh, your uh kind of journey started very early i know that they opened up the application process uh, like back in i think september and then you go through that process and then obviously they select you and then you are announced as one of the last or really the big chunk of last internal selections that we got kind of the beginning of march so I, my big question for you is, have you always been thinking about going to Eurovision or was this one of those like right time, right moment kind of decisions? Hey, for me, I'm a live musician. I'm, a, I'm, I'm used to touring a lot for Switzerland and Germany and, and really going to live music. And it was really uh, after Corona, I, I needed to have something, you know, which which brings me up, brings me, me and my team back on a into this workflow. And I thought, okay, Eurovision is something I I'm watching it every year because I'm just f fascinated of it. I, I'm not a, a like a fan fan, but but I think it's such a creative event where, where so many different styles of music come together, and it's really fascinating for me. So I thought, okay, that that could be really cool to do that. So I just uh, gave in my song and they and we had, I think, 400 artists in Switzerland, which which did this competition and I won. So easy it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're super excited that you won uh, because I think at least just from like the TikTok video and the pictures and everything <laughs> like that, I mean, your staging design just looks beautiful. Now, of course, there could be some other things out there. Uh, we won't know until the second rehearsal comes out for the press side of things. We kind of see the whole picture, um, but mm -hmm. we're super excited. Um, and I wanted to ask you specifically, um, I know that a lot of the artists have kind of had to adjust some of their plans because of the, the LED sun and everything like that. But uh, how did your kind of concept for Eurovision kind of come about? Uh, my uh, my concept has a lot to do with the song. Okay, <laughs> does every <laughs> lightning concept, isn't it? But uh, but it's what's the different thing of my song, Boys to Cry? It's not about showing off what the great voice I have or how good I can dance. The performance is really an intimate um, performance where I really have to focus on my camera it's gonna be we're gonna have different cuts much closer to my face and it's i i always said it's gonna be like an asmr performance bit you know where, where you really create a mood and and get to the audience in your living room and give you a three minute long hug yeah so it's not about showing off something 
what, what we're used to at the Eurovision. It's about creating a mood and includes you and give you a warmth, you know, give you this feeling of straight through the camera, give you this feeling of, oh, oh, that was beautiful. And, oh, that felt, that felt beautiful in here, you know? And that's, so we weren't really, um, we kind of, we don't need a lot of big LED streams and fireworks and things. So it's, it's all about like the lightning, they're all little adjustments, you know, but really important and a lot of thoughts behind it. Yeah. Well, and I wanted to ask you um, as well, when we were thinking about kind of getting to Eurovision. Um, so I know that obviously you are representing Switzerland and you went through that process, but I was reading in another interview that you also are part Australian and you have a Australian citizenship. Had you ever thought that maybe Australia could be a way to get to Eurovision or was it Switzerland and Switzerland only? I mean, the last time when I was in Australia, I was eight. And I still got some relatives down there and friends of my family. And we sometimes do Zoom calls, but I hadn't time to go to Australia. So for me, it was always Switzerland was the thing. But it could be, imagine, yeah, I mean, I mean, if it, if I want to have another go, another try, let's ask the Australians, why not? <laughs> who knows? I mean, we've had plenty of artists who have come back twice, three times in Valentina's case, four times. Who wants to come back for a fifth? So the door is open, possibly. <laughs> yeah. All cool. right. Well, uh, I did have, we have two quick uh, final questions for you. So what would be one thing that our listeners would be surprised to learn about you? Like a hidden talent, hobby, passion, something that they wouldn't know. I love building machines, <laughs> you know, like excavators. And uh, because I grew up and, uh, with always having like this company of my father around and I was always in like a lot of mechanic stuff and things and I, and I, and I repaired excavators or, or all sorts of building machines. And I think it's really fascinating thanks to music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and that was another question I was going to ask, so I'll, I'll throw it in here, because um, I know that that's actually what you were studying in school before you left and switched over to music. So what changed? What made you decide that music was a better possible career venture for you than doing the construction machinery? I have to say it, it, it was the Swiss army, uh, because uh, in Switzerland we have to go to, to, to the army, so it's com uh, uh, compulsory. Every young man has to go to the army. And um, I was there and I found my talent there because I was an officer and I had to, every morning I had to go out to this big space and go like do all the, you know, like shoutings. And one of my soldiers, he was a musician. He was a metal musician. And he came to me like, you have to sing metal. You know, like, ah, you've got a huge voice. You have to try that. And we, we hang out in the evening and jam. And then I... And that's the first time when I was 22, that was the first moment uh, how I came in touch with music. How I came in touch with music, like me singing. Mm -hmm. And it changed my world and it changed my whole life and it changed my direction of where I wanted to go. And now I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it probably put a very cool domino path in front of you of going from being in the Swiss army, leaving school, to six years later being at Eurovision for Switzerland. So Crazy, um, yeah. yeah, well, I wanted to ask you one final question. It's the hardest question that I've been asking all of our artists this mm -hmm. year. Who gets your 12 points at Eurovision this year? I think it's really hard this year because uh, for me, uh, again, again, the quality went up one step further for the duration if you compare it to last year and the year before it's always rising up here um so it's really hard i mean that there's that there's sam rider which which has already like a huge community so i don't have to give him points but i love his song too uh there's sweden which is an amazing song such a great track um i also love the, the netherlands Netherlands has also a really great song. Uh, but my 
12 points I will give to um, I think my my 12 points will go to um there's this other song yeah it's it's gonna be Sweden yeah and I also All think right. Sweden's gonna win yeah We'll never know. She after is one me, of the favorites. Me, first, <laughs> first <laughs> yes, yes. You'll win, and then they'll just be like, you know, then, we have to give it to Cornelia, to too. So, and they'll pull a, a mean share. girls. I'm going to share. <laughs> they'll pull a mean girls. They'll split the trophy in half, give you half, give her the other. I'm good. I mean, people can't, any, uh, anyway, they can't uh, separate Sweden from Switzerland or Switzerland from Sweden. So it's. Uh... <laughs> there you go. Perfect, perfect. Well, uh, Marius, I want to obviously be respectful of your time. I know that you've got a pretty long day of press. I know that you've also got your uh, second rehearsals coming up here soon. Yeah. So um, I want to thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time here uh, today with us and giving us some of your time. Um, for all of those who are listening, make sure that you tune in to the first semifinal so that you can support Marius. Make sure that you vote, all those kinds of things. Um, and if you want to support us here on the channel, make sure that you do a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, and I will also say, make sure that you follow Marius and listen to all of his music and support his career, you know, all those good things. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a goodbye. And we're so excited to see what you're going to do on that stage come May 10th. Me on too. Turin. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all righty. Thank you so much, Marius. Thank you so much, guys. Greetings. Bye-bye.